This is One on One. There she is, Christine Tesorio, who is a Spanish teacher at Cavallini Medical School, Middle School, excuse me, in Upper Saddle River. How are you doing? I'm great. How are you? Uh, great. By the way, why did you go into teaching in the first place? Because I hated Spanish when I was in middle school. No way! <laughs> I did. I have to admit, I, um, I had a lot of difficulty learning the language. I'm not a native speaker. Right. And I just had a hard time finding a purpose. What was I ever going to use Spanish for in my life? And so. that's why you did it. <laughs> and then it, it clicked. Something clicked in high school. So. Well, we're about to see a video. Our partners at the New Jersey Education Association, they produce this wonderful series, as I've said many times, Classroom Close-Up with our uh, partner network. Uh, NJTV is a wonderful series. Uh, check out the website at njtvonline.org. You'll see when they're up and also when that's on also the uh, website for, uh, for uh, the NJA. You teach seventh graders. I do. Okay. This is an interesting program, and it is, you're connecting students to students in Seville, mm -hmm. Spain. In Spain. Which, by the way, as we do this program, my son is in, I tell you, he's a, he's a student at Fordham, a junior. He's in Seville. He's, a, he's studying Spanish as well over there, uh, and he's excited about this, and he'll get to see this, because online there's all kinds of connections. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk to Christine right after this, but I have a feeling the video you're about to see will explain more than you ever could imagine about this wonderful, innovative program, and this terrific teacher right here. Let's look at Classroom Close-Up right now. Okay, buenos dias, clase. ¿Cómo están? If you studied a foreign language in school, chances are you remember conjugating verbs, translating phrases, and having model conversations with your classmates. You also realize that it's not easy to become fluent in a language when you don't have the opportunity to use it in everyday life. Even in a culturally diverse state like New Jersey, where world languages are a required part of the curriculum beginning in kindergarten, gaining the practical experience needed to learn a language is a challenge. At Cavallini Middle School, educators are using technology to meet that challenge. My students are enjoying the experience of having an ePAL in Spain because they really get a chance to connect with somebody globally and use what we're learning in Spanish outside of these four walls. They're taking everything that they've ever learned and then some and putting it into practice. ePALS is an online learning environment that enables schools from around the globe to connect and collaborate. For example, connecting a class of students in New Jersey studying Spanish with a class of students in Spain studying English. So this is the first letter she sent me. She says, hi, my name is Marta Yu. I'm from Spain. I'm 11 years old. My birthday is on the 7th of January. I live in Almencilla, which is a town near Sevilla. It's more interactive, so you're not just reading a textbook or having you take notes, you're actually like talking to someone your age and so I can connect to that person. Primarily right now we're emailing. Students can send an email and then also they're sending pictures back and forth. But we're looking to hopefully Skype one day and even looking into maybe creating a blog where we can talk about current events and get everybody on the same page. In this new email that we did today, they were discussing food and culturally what that's like and the differences and similarities there. Students love talking about controversial issues too. We learned about the bullfight a couple months ago and students were dying to know what their ePals thought about the bullfight. How could they possibly be for or against it? And so that was an issue that they wanted to bring up right away as soon as they learned about it. To me, the most exciting part is when a student comes to class and tells me that last night it wasn't even assigned, but they went on and logged in and read an email and wrote back. So it's the motivation, it's the engagement, it's the smiles, it's all of that makes it really worth it. I think it's a huge advantage because you get to learn more from other people. Like, not every day a student is going to be able to talk to some, some person in Spain that knows a lot more Spanish than I do. We have more opportunities to learn Spanish, learn about their culture, and they have a lot more opportunities to learn about our culture, and I think that's pretty extraordinary. That young man, Thomas, he's into it, isn't he? They all are, yeah. Even the, the students who normally are not very motivated, they're I'm finding through this program they've really been intrinsically motivated. And they debate things like, it's fascinating, they debate things like bullfighting. Yeah. 
we'll learn about something cultural. And rather than saying, oh, that's weird, or that's so different, I can't even imagine why they do those things, now they have a real connection to it. And it's, it takes away the, the snap judgments, and it allows them to open up the dialogue and, and have a real discussion in Spanish and English. They're having these bilingual conversations. It's interesting. It ePals, right? ePals. What has it done for you as a teacher? For me, it's all about the motivation, you know, because that's how it was for me as a learner. I, I didn't see a purpose. I couldn't imagine where I would use Spanish, and it just seemed like a burden. One extra class to study for, extra homework to do. And um, when I heard about ePals, I knew this was the solution. I knew that this was going to be the way, especially in a middle school, because sometimes Why? I find that a lot of times I talk to the students about, you're going to use this when you get a job someday. Everything is someday. And I needed a way to connect them to the language immediately, here and now. And ePals did that for them. I mean, they're already communicating online. They're on Facebook. They're using blogs. And they're, they're doing all of these things that integrate 21st century skills. But now they're using it to connect to our curriculum. And that is something I could never have imagined. You know, I was thinking about the Skype part, because I Skype with my son as we're doing this program. There's a six-hour difference, right? Yes. And so for academic purposes, that's a problem. Right. Because 12 o'clock here on the East Coast in, in the United States is clearly, you know, 6 o'clock in the evening right. there. So it doesn't work. Yeah, we're looking. The teacher and I, um, you know, the classroom that we're set up with, we're looking the into... The teacher in, in Seville. In, yeah, in Spain. We're, we're looking into how we can do that. And we're thinking maybe if they stay late and we come <laughs> in early, there'll be some way to... To make it happen, you, you've, you're pretty innovative, aren't you? You have to be. Um, what do, you, do you have to be a great teacher? We, in the classroom close-up series that we've been doing with the NJA, the one common thread, other than passion and commitment, we've seen in the teachers, is they they are incredibly innovative. You have to be. Have to be. If you wanna, if you wanna get them, if you wanna, you know, to catch them and to get them excited, um, to make them wanna show up to your class and. You know, my goal is I want them to go home and uh, when asked about their day at the dinner table, I want them to talk about my class. That's so funny you say that. I'll do that with our, our eight and ten year old uh, boys right now. Tell me the most interesting thing that happened in school today. Uh, I'm sorry, the Recess, teachers who are watching probably. right now. But, but they'll, they'll come up with good stuff. But you want it to jump right out of the page, yeah. right off the page, like they have it. Mm -hmm. I was talking to this kid in Seville, Spain, and we did, we talked about bullfighting, whatever it is. Right. That's innovative, that's exciting. One to ten. How much do you love your job? Beyond the scale. Come on. Every teacher says the I same know, thing I have in cliche, here. I know it's cliche, but it's true. I mean, and again, you have to be. You have to be innovative, and you have to, you have to love it in order to um, It's not to make for the, it the big work. cash? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's not for the I big cash. I can't say it is. <laughs> no, it's not, right? <laughs> no, I wish, but no. <laughs> it is for the kids and for the impact you have on them, right? I, I think so. You know what? You, you should be very proud of yourself and proud of your students, and we are proud of you and, Thank you. and proud of our partnership with the NJA. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks for You're having a good me. representation, good representative of teachers. Great job. Thank you. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding has been provided by the New Jersey Education Association, Wells Fargo, the Adler Aphasia Center, PSENG, the law firm of Gibbons PC, Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, Bloomfield College, transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. One on One with Steve Adubato has been produced in partnership with St. Joseph's Healthcare System.